What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to take a bass tone from this to something a little bit cooler like this. So that was just something that I put together real quick, wrote and recorded that last night for this video demo. So let's go ahead and check it out. Today we are talking about the Joey Sturgis Tones Bass Forge Hellraiser plugin. This thing is sweet, man. Let's jump in Pro Tools and let's take a look at what we're doing here. This is what the plugin interface looks like right here. It's really simple. It's just like all the other Tone Forge uh, amps that JST puts out. I'm gonna show you again here. Let's just go here, the DI. So this is just the DI signal. And then when we engage the amp sim, which is just the one plugin, I'll explain to you what this uh, bass axe effects track is in a second. But when we engage just this plugin, we go from that DI tone to this. So it's already a huge difference. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this plugin does. I'll explain it to you and then I'll show you what I did and why. This first part, we just have your basic amp. It looks like, uh, you know, you've got your gain, bass, mid, treble, and this clank, you have raise hell and enhance sub. Uh, the enhanced sub is just going to give your subharmonics a lift and not necessarily make the sub louder, but it's going to bring the overall lower frequencies. Uh, it's going to make it sound better and more full. I recommend having that on. I recommend also putting the raise hell on. I mean, it's, it's called Hellraiser. I mean, I think you have to put that switch on, right? I mean, you don't have to, but do it. I will just go through and twist some knobs and you can kind of hear what's going on. So you get an idea kind of what the knobs do there. Now, there is also a demon fuzz pedal at the front of the amp that you can engage, and it just gives it a really nasty gritty sound, so. I personally like this when it's got a bass boost on here. Um, it sounds pretty freaking insane. Um, I just had to like really get in there and look at it because I can't see it's my computer, it, everything's so tiny on it, but it sounds really cool. Now to explain what the second track is that I have here, uh, basically I'm doing what this fuzz box does just on a separate channel that I can just blend in differently. It's not really any different. It's just a different distortion sound that I wanted uh, that I recorded through the Axe Effects as I recorded my DI. I recorded the DI through a Countryman DI. I used the Dingwall bass, the NG2 combustion, and I recorded just the, B the, the BI tone, the DI tone, which is, you know, you don't ever really want that to be your bass tone. I mean, if you do, that's weird, but, um, that's just the dry bass signal. Great sounding DI, it's a great sounding instrument. And then I had this, I have a, an EQ here that's just basically rolling off the lows 
and like cutting the lows and I'm notching out a couple weird whistly frequencies. Um, so this is essentially just the high end tone, but gritty sound. And then here I'm taking all the clean tones, the low end and creating my tone together, going to a bus with the bus glue bass, also JST plugin as well. And we get this. Well, let's go back to my setting. That was, this was my setting. So this was the setting that I have been using. We also have many different cabinet options. So I just use the JST Max Cab because the dude obviously knows what he's doing, so I trust him. And it sounds really good to me, but if you want something different like an Ampeg 8x10, you can do that and you've got your different microphones here. So we can go ahead and check out what these sound like. We've got a two by 15. Sounds really good too. Yeah, I like that, that's cool. One of the coolest things is, if you guys don't like any of these cabs, which, I mean, you, you can get great freaking sounds with this, so if you can't get a good sound with this, then something's not right with your bass, or it probably didn't have strings on it or something. You can load your own impulse response if you want to, and that's a really cool feature because there's so many different cabinet options you can pick from, and you can literally create any sound you could imagine with this one plugin. So, I like the, the matched plugin, I'm gonna stick with that. Um, there's some presets that come with it. Uh, my personal favorite is this Devil's Rock one. The Heavy Clank is pretty insane. Uh, these two are my favorites out of them. Uh, they all sound really good. I just started with the with one, and then I just kind of tweaked from there. Uh, we have a EQ that you can tweak your tone even a little bit more. Just doing a little bit here, not much. And then this is the coolest part about this plugin, in my opinion, is. Well, besides that, it sounds awesome. But this right here, it's it's a crossover compressor limiter. So basically what's happening here is how I normally do bass tracks, and a lot of people do it this way, is you're gonna record your DI, right? And then you're going to duplicate the track. You're gonna take one end and you're gonna cut all the lows. You're gonna take the other one and you're gonna cut all the highs. And you're gonna be able to kind of cut your mid range out that you don't want, but you can, you can enhance your sub that way, you can limit it, squash it, so your low end is consistent, and then you can take your high end and create the tone with whatever amp sims you want, or you know whatever distortion, or whatever tone you're looking to achieve. So this plugin has that all built in, and right here you can see, I'll go ahead and solo this, so this is the, the low sub end here. And you can use this crossover here to pick the frequency range that you want it at. I think I had it like 153 or something like that. I think I had it here. And you can blend the mix there too. And then if we go over here to bank B, you'll hear that it's just the high end. So we have it limiting the low end to really squeeze it, and we're compressing the top end just to control it a little more. And you can adjust your peak reduction, your gain, you can adjust everything there and blend it how you want it to sound as where you would have two tracks and you blend the volumes and whatnot. This is all built into this one plugin. So it's a really great one-stop shop for your bass tone. Again, I just personally wanted to use a different top end distortion that I recorded in. So I'm using that and I think it sounds great. I think it sounds great without it. Uh, I mean, you can get some freaking nasty sounding bass tones with this thing. So I'm just gonna kind of play this track and I'm gonna just change through some stuff and I'm, I'm gonna take, first of all, let's listen to it again with what I have and then I'll just mess with it a little bit and take my top end out and just use the plugin. So here's what um, I had going on. 
I can go back to my hardware SSL because I figured out how to record this video. So you definitely get that nice low end, that smooth creaminess, and then you get that clanky metal bass tone. And if you're going for a rock sound, you can definitely get a rock sound too. Uh, you don't have to get that clanky, clanky sound if you don't want. This thing is definitely capable of doing uh, a lot of different tones. So I'm going to go ahead and mute my top end distortion, and we're going to go, we're going to go through and listen to this. So let's let's pull the guitars out. I just realized right now that this has a normal setting and a bass boost and a dry. I didn't even realize that till right now, so I just learned something new making this video. It sounds great on the normal, and there we go. That's probably why I was using something different because I didn't even notice that. So pay attention to that. There's uh, three settings you can do here. So without it, and with it, So you can start to see how there's so many different tone options you can have here. And if you want to get something, you know, this is a very heavy track, but if I wanted to get a, a cleaner sounding tone, um, let, let's go ahead and loop a section here and let's see if we can get a cleaner sounding bass tone, something a little more smooth. So I'm just going to mess with this and see what we come up with. Um, let's see. Damn it, Pro Tools. So you can see that quickly. I just kind of changed the cabinet and the mic, went to the FET 47 and just dialed some knobs back to take some of the intensity out of it and took the overdrive off. And there we go. We've got like a rock bass tone now. I mean, dude, this thing sounds insane. It's uh, it's really freaking cool. Uh, this is by far my favorite bass plugin now. Uh, I was waiting for this to come out. I'm so glad it's here. It's it's awesome. I don't really know what else I can show you. I hope I'm not missing anything. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's really easy to use. Uh, if we can go to, let me just throw on the default setting. This is where it comes at default. Now my signal's a little hot, so I have to roll this back a little bit, but here's what the default sounds like.
Let's check that out. I just made literally a tone right there from scratch. Uh, let's see. So there you guys have it. JST Base Forge Hellraiser. It's my favorite base plugin. Check the links in the description down below. I'll link it there where you can check it out for yourself if you want to pick it up. It's pretty sweet. It's a very affordable option for bass. And uh, it's great whether you're touring, you're in the studio, and you know, I freaking love it. So anyway, I hope this video helps you guys out figuring out how to get a killer bass tone. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I have more content coming for you guys soon. So be on the lookout. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.